Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's great to see that now, finally, after two years of obfuscation, meetings behind closed doors and wasting taxpayers' money on this development, even after the Marsden development that the Whitford Independent supported, pulled out and, and they continued to forge, a forge ahead to support their developer friends. Tonight we can see this green space be safe from development. This land is a green buffer between the Whitford High Street and the Wick. Once it's concreted over, you can't replace it. And to coin a phrase, when it's gone, it's gone. And Councillor Holland, one of my colleagues, rightly said from Big Yellow Taxi, you don't know what you, you've got until it's gone. Residents were firmly against this proposed secure residential care home, and we can see their wishes be delivered on in this report. I had the pleasure of seconding two motions that sought to save this green space that were ultimately voted down by the previous administration. The last administration was led by the Basildon Centric Labour Party, supported by their subordinates, the Whitford Independents, who said no to saving this green space, no to protecting Gilbert from eviction, and no to the people of Whitford having a consultation on plans put forward for their town. No, 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 is what they told the residents of Wickford. The council under their leadership simply didn't want to listen and at worst didn't care. They still don't. And I have something that I'd like to share with the committee. This is an email from a certain councillor who voted twice to continue the sale of this land despite strong objections. And I'll list two points they made. I've made clear that my belief is that this proposed site is totally inappropriate. And if we go further down, you see there's yet more green space being removed but somehow they consistently voted to enable the loss of this green space and habitat for wildlife. How ironic. This council's election campaign was solely based on, on their support of saving this land, standing with residents decrying the decision to ever attempt to sell this. I ask you, what did they end up doing? Consistently voting to sell it. Mr Chairman, this has been their policy since the 25th of January 2018 to sell the land and pile on the traffic for, for local residents trying to leave their homes on Southport Crescent and Redlands Avenue. I'm glad that as a party we listen to residents and are now stopping the sale of this land, keeping the green space separating Wickford Town Centre and the Wick. It's regrettable that the developer who has come here tonight has had their time wasted at the hands of the former administration. It's ironic that the developer is here to speak when residents weren't afforded the same courtesy over the last two years. A good, a good analogy for this is treating it like a cake that no one wants. It doesn't matter how many sprinkles and squirty cream you add to it, if they don't like it, they simply won't buy it and eat it. So we are aware of the positioning of the care home that was going to be at the edge of the site, close to the corner of Southport Crescent. Three storeys higher from its perch, it would be overlooking residents on Tiptree Grove, Doe's Hill Drive and Radwinter Avenue, infringing on their privacy. With this green space in a prominent location in Wickford and with this development at its proposed height, it would be seen from London Road, Radwinter Avenue and Golden Jubilee Way. Furthermore, with its classification as HC5, a green open space in our local emerging local plan, if this sale was to go ahead and be granted planning permission, we would set the planning precedent for other spaces under the same designation to be at risk, such as the Wick Country Park. I hope that now as this land is no longer under the threat of development and with options being explored to protect this for the future, we can invest in this green space for the long term. And I also want firm assurances from officers tonight that we will be seeing this land protected in perpetuity in fields in trust arrangement or a village green status arrangement at the earliest opportunity. Finally, Chairman, I'd like to thank the hard work of residents and Wickford SOS campaigners who have fought, fought tirelessly since 2019 to save this land from development and commend them for their work in holding those who say one thing and do another to account for their actions. Thank you, Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, Councillor Buckley. Yeah, th thank you, Chairman. Um, I'll start off by saying um, I have no issues with Montpellier Estates as, a, as an organisation. I think um, the leaflet that they've shown us shows us that they can deliver some good quality properties in the various locations across the country. The one that caught my eye actually was the one on page three of uh, Linden Road Vista, which is very similar to the designs that uh, we've tried to promote in other parts of Wickford. Um, however, um, whilst I may welcome their types of development on some sites, in this particular instance, um, it's a site which has been promoted by officers since the year dot. Um, I stood down as leader of this council in 2009 and prior to that officers were promoting it as an opportunity to raise funds. 
I vetoed it at that time. We had a cabinet system. It never got to the public domain. I remain of the same view that to develop this site, it's the entrance to one of the major housing areas in Wickford, and that to put more development there would create the wrong impression for people that want to go and live in a peaceful, quiet, green area. Going on further from that, though, um, we have to look at the, um, the, uh, the local plan submission. This area is clearly marked as public open space, as Councillor Jeffrey mentioned. It would be an extremely unwelcome um, precedent to set were we to start building on public open space willy-nilly. So I think purely from that ground alone, that is good enough reason to say that we should not even be entertaining it. Previously, as you know, it, it was proposed by the Labour Independent uh, Coalition that it should have been a pub come hotel. Um, we've now got a three-storey care home. And, yeah, I, I would liken the, the, the outline of the structure to being not dissimilar. And whilst I do hear what um, the gentleman from Montpellier said uh, about landscaping, public space and so on, um, there is a, a strong view that actually leaving it as a natural meadow is probably the right, uh, the right solution. It's one of the few green areas close to the centre of Wickford. It is certainly one of the few public green areas close to the centre of Wickford. We've got a uh, school playing field, but uh, obviously that's not available for the general public. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I think it... It was totally irrational of the previous administration to decide to go ahead with the sale and uh, you know, despite the arguments we've sometimes heard from uh, my, uh, from Councillor Jeffrey's ward colleague that, oh, it was the Tories wanted to sell it. The Tories have never voted to sell it. It was on a list of sites to consider and when that consideration came, came to what was then the uh, Cabinet, it was, ac it was actually the... Um, independents and the Labour Party that voted to sell. Not a single Conservative voted for the sale of that site. I see no reason why we should do a U-turn on that policy that stood, stood up in, to the test then. I see no reason why we should do it now. I would, though, if I may, like to just ask a quick question of officers um, in relation to recommendation two, um, which is the, the option to protect the site from development. Um, could I ask, um, I'm not sure which is the appropriate officer on this, what is the quickest time that we can actually develop a, a report to consider whether it's fields in trust, village green, or another option that I may not have thought of that would protect the site in perpetuity? How long would that take? Chairman, I think the officers need to work out who has to answer that. If I may, Chair, just in response to Councillor Buckley, apologies, I was just conferring with my legal um, rep. Um, we'll probably need to sort of digest, come back, uh, Councillor Buckley. It'll probably take a couple of months for us to uh, check the, the legal route for this. Uh, we'll try and do it quicker than a couple of months, but that's the, the likely time scale we would need to get the information back and get a report back to this committee. Mr. Brace. Uh, we could, in the interim, where we come to whether it could be filled in trust or protected in a different way, we could do um, a motion at full council, as we did for in the community centre in the area there, about not being used for anything else other than community use. Thank you. Can I come back on that, Chairman? Um, I would be concerned about a motion to council because uh, we all know that a new administration coming in could change that. And certainly I think it is the views of uh, some members of opposition parties that uh, taking money out of sites like this is too easy. Um, what I would like to do, though, if, uh, if I may, Chairman, is to um, ask if we could add an addendum to recommendation two and say that the report should come back let's say no later than the end of October 2021, which I think, given that uh, officers have said a couple of months, that's giving them three months. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And then this committee can consider what an, 
assuming that we pass the recommendations, um, this committee then consider whether fields in trust, village, green, whatever is the right way. And there is some experience of it in the past, and I think um, I'm sure Mr. Brace will remember Kempview Plain Fields, for example, as one of the one of the opportunities. Um, it's not the only answer, um, but we do need the professional advice on that. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, a number of things to unpick there. The first one being the addendum. Uh, do you have a seconder? Councillor Cullivan, okay, thank you very much. Uh, before we throw it open to the, the addendum, uh, or this, the, the amendment open to debate, um, first thing, a personal thing of mine is, is I'm, I'm gobsmacked that in local government it's going to take us two months to actually come up with a, with a, with a solution. Um, it just, I know that we've set a fast pace of change within the uh, organisation. I know that we're moving at a rate of knots. But the idea that now all of a sudden it's going to take us two months to actually look at what we, we've done or where there are precedents elsewhere uh, seems really, really slow. Uh, and I'm sure that the public don't necessarily get that the, uh, the rate of, 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 of the way that local government works. So if we could actually try and, and get something a little bit quicker, that would be really appreciated. Um, again, I'd also just like to, to make the point to, to Montpellier uh, that uh, this isn't an administration that says no, no, no. This is an administration that is open-minded, wants to actually work with people that have got ideas to better the community. But in this particular case, this was just an example which we saw all too often with the previous administration of coming up with an idea, engaging with people without any public consultation, then any thought of consequences, and then dropping other people in it to pick up the pieces afterwards. Uh, and we're not about that. We want to actually make sure that when we do carry things through, that it's also with the will of the people and having engaged people in what it is we do. So you really do have my apologies uh, on behalf of uh, the council for any time you may have wasted, but uh, I am very, very clear that from our point of view, we will take into account the wishes of the public when we make our decisions. Uh, so we have the amendment. Uh, anybody wanted to speak to the amendment? Councillor Holliman. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just really wanted to add a very short note to say that uh, um, considering what Whitford has been through and is going to go through in the next uh, few years, uh, I wanted to add my um, support for the development of the site, but the development to keep it as it is and to improve it, if anything, by its appearance. Um, it is certainly a green area. It is a green area that could be improved a lot more. I noticed from social media that uh, some of the comments coming back was that um, it has fallen into a bit of a state that um, would make it difficult for people to enjoy it. So I think along with any type of scheme to protect the area, uh, whether we could build into that from right from the very beginning uh, a means of adding this to our uh, ongoing development of open spaces, because unfortunately it would need some type of uh, husbandry just to make it uh, a little bit more presentable. Um, in terms of uh, the position uh, for a building development, um, I think it's fairly well assumed looking at it that it just doesn't seem to lend itself to a hard construction of any type. Um, so really it speaks for itself. It is a green piece of land and deserves to be developed exactly for that purpose. So just to, um, as I said, just really just to emphasize full support, but for support to leave it as a green area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Holland. Councillor Headley. And can I, um, through you, Chairman, can I suggest that the officers dust off the paperwork on Sun Corner, which went through a very similar process, and it may be a shortcut to um, obtaining the protection that Councillor Buckley is looking for at Sun Corner in Billingham. Thank you. Um, with the amendment, what I'm, I'm looking to do, if it meets with Councillor Buckley's approval, uh, is to, at the end of the recommendation two, where it says future meeting of this committee, uh, add a comma, no later than 14th of October 2021, which is the next meeting of this committee anyway, and actually even fits in with the, 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 the two-month um, period that the officers originally suggested. Uh, does anybody wish, else wish to speak to the amendment? Okay, we will vote on the amendment then. Uh, all those in favour? All those against? Any abstentions? 
We have one abstention, two against, and the rest in favour. Thank you. The, the uh, amendment now becomes a substantive. Anybody wishing to speak on the substantive? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I think it's rather odd. I mean, we can debate the pros and cons of this site. And if it gets protection, even better, it gives the residents some peace of mind. I think if this piece of land was in my ward, I'd be a bit concerned because one, we'd have a basil and postcode and two, it could be picked off for development and something unpleasant. So if it was a care home, I'd think to myself, protect the site. But if you can get this fields in trust status, then that gives the residents the peace of mind. Unfortunately, when you're south of the 127, you always keep that in the back of your mind. Something nasty could go on that site. Now, this is a question, Mr Chairman. I see the Chief Executive is still here. Now, a, a committee of this council made an agreement in January. Why was it a week after the election results were made this deal was dropped? Officers had the agreement from councillors, admittedly the Conservative opposition at the time voted against. It's fallen into your laps. You've got an election manifesto I promise you can keep, which I'm sure your constituents will be delighted with. And it's nice when people get what they want in life. I don't see anything wrong with that. But officers of this council were tasked in January to follow through an agreement of this committee, or this fourth layer of this committee, and nothing was done. And when we had a change of shock, you could kill this policy. I think going forward that if a committee of this council makes a decision, the officers should just get on with the work and not procrastinate. Because we have a developer here who might think, OK, hard bump, move along. But potentially, he could take legal action against the council. I hope he doesn't, because that's the taxpayer. So officers of the council have enabled you to keep an election promise and left the council possibly wide open to legal action. So I wonder if the chief executive could possibly, Mr Jim, explain himself. Why, is it, why was there all this possible procrastination? Uh, some say tomato, some say tomato. One could also say, was it appropriate for uh, committees planning to be gerrymandered in order to rush through unpopular decisions for uh, building into the, uh, in the town centre? But, hey, uh, you know, different onion, different gravy, I guess. Uh, does the, does, did, the, uh, did the chief executive wish to comment? Point of order, Councillor Ferguson. That you've made a slur against previous committees. That, that, should not, that is not language that is appropriate in this council. I ask you to withdraw that remark. Uh, no. I won't, because uh, I'm absolutely clear, uh, and we are still looking into the processes that went by with regards planning committees uh, in this council and some of the, uh, the things that were going on at the time. And as you well know, uh, there were a number of incidents around planning which were unsavoury uh, at the uh, end of the previous administration's reign, uh, and we're not going to stand for it. We're not going to have that sort of behaviour, and we're not going to let it stay under the carpet. Did the uh, Chief Executive want to comment? I can only add what's explained um, to members who've raised this inquiry to my officers and myself is that the completion wasn't done before the date of the election and the new administration asked to review the decision, which is why the decision is before you. So, yeah, unfortunately, the, the papers were not signed before the date of the election, hence why it's in front of you now for consideration. Thank you, uh, Chief Executive. Very clear and very, very simple. Thank you. Any other members we should speak? Councillor Ferguson. Thank you, Mr Chairman. And I must again repeat my disappointment with your use of language tonight. Words matter, language matters in politics, and it's important that you get that right. And unfortunately tonight you have demeaned yourself and the, uh, the position of this council by using language against former members of, of administration uh, and, and officers that were involved in uh, planning committees. That, that said, I'm concerned about the, uh, the report that we, we face in front of us. And... Uh, you talk about an administration that's going at a rate of knots and uh, that's bringing lots of things forward. It's only taken us two months to have a policy meeting. Um, and you talk about wanting to listen to, to residents. I dread to think what you think of the government's flagship planning bill that's coming forward and what that will mean for development that's, uh, that's coming forward. And as Councillor Smith quite rightly said, that a, a care home will, will protect the development. It's something that residents would, I think, much more support uh, than the alternative that we could face going forward. I think we've had a developer come down here tonight uh, and I want to thank uh, Representative Mon Montpellier for being here tonight because I think it shows their commitment to wanting to work with this borough and as uh, Councillor Buckley has said they've brought forward some, some good schemes they could bring some good schemes forward in this borough if we let them but what the motion that you're seeking to, to bring tonight will actually do nothing for what you want it to achieve because all it will do is lead to delay and delay and delay 
with no protection, with a government planning bill that could threaten anything that we put in, in place in, in the future. We've had representative from Montpellier be here tonight actually come forward with a sensible suggestion of actually let's defer the decision, let's listen to the residents, let's actually see if there's a way of making something work, uh, and then let's actually carry that out. Much better doing it that way than what you're proposing tonight of delay, 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 which will lead to no action uh, and, and it could put us in a worse position uh, than we're currently in. Well, I'm minded of your predecessor, God bless him, whatever we actually said, let's consult, let's actually think things through, uh, would say, no, no, you, all you're trying to do is kick it into the long grass. You're trying to actually get things derailed and then stop our progress. So uh, what we have here is a very, very clear decision based upon the very, very clear wishes of the public with a very, very clear plan to protect the green space. Uh, and it's something that I'm not minded to actually uh, put into the long grass. Well, uh, Councillor Buckley wishes to speak. Councillor Buckley. Yeah, th thank you, Chairman. Um, I just would like to take issue with some of the comments that uh, Councillor Ferguson made. And, uh, you know, we're not talking about a piece of land that is even scheduled for development in the future in the, in the local plan. This is a piece of land that is scheduled to be public, open space. Now, I don't know what he doesn't understand about that, uh, that term, but there are plenty of other areas which are designated for housing, and I'm sure that we would welcome Montpellier as well as many other developers to participate in those schemes. But as, as for what words mean, I can recall being slapped down in council more than once for using a word, Kratos. Um, it means a lot to some of us here. It means nothing to the public, but the reality of it is we all know that pressures were put on members and decisions were made which were not reflecting the local community's wishes. They certainly were not reflecting the wishes of local members. And this is at last an opportunity for those people who have campaigned for, as Councillor Jeffrey said, in excess of two years to have their green area preserved. That's what we will do if we pass this resolution tonight. And that's, that site then will get the protection of whether it's fields in trust or whatever, but they can look at that in perpetuity and know it wasn't us that destroyed it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Buckley. Any other members that wish to speak? Okay, we put the now substantive to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? We have three against and the remainder in favour, so the motion is passed. Thank you very much, members, for your time and considered uh, opinion on that. We now move on to uh, item number five, the Langdon Community Centre, which is on page 17 of your agendas. And again, there is a, there is a running theme here 